Some of my favorite Bible verses are in Leviticus. Yes, you heard me right, Leviticus. That Leviticus. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman, for it is an abomination, Leviticus. But Leviticus is a complex book, so let's dive deeper. In America, some folks say that we need to base laws around Judeo-Christian values. Now, I don't think that religious texts make the best laws in a diverse, secular society, but there's at least one Judeo-Christian value from Leviticus that I'm a fan of. Leviticus 19.33-34 through 34 says, When a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native-born. Love them as yourself, for you were foreigners in Egypt. Another one of my favorite ideas is found in Leviticus 25, the year of Jubilee. Leviticus 25 starts off by calling for a Sabbath year every seven years. For that whole year, the idea is that you don't sow your fields or prune your vineyards. You rest, and you let the earth rest. Whatever the land happens to yield, you eat, and you share with your family and hired hands in the residents of your area. Then, every seventh Sabbath year, every 49 years, is a year of Jubilee. And this is where it gets really cool. The year of Jubilee is God's plan for a radical redistribution of land and property and freedom. It's returning land that had to be sold to pay debts. It's canceling all debts. It's setting slaves and their children free and allowing all to eat from the food of the fields. It's enough to make most politicians and perhaps most people a little bit nervous. Maybe we'd rather pick and choose those Judeo-Christian values after all. But the Sabbath year and the year of Jubilee aren't one-time occurrences. Rather, God calls for a recurring system of resetting society. God knows that despite all the warnings, we're going to mess it up. So God is constantly working to undo the systems of oppression which we create. The slave, the poor, the immigrant, the disenfranchised, the homeless. They're all no greater and no less than the factory owner, the millionaire, the citizen, or the real estate mogul. If this idea of Jubilee resonates with you, you should check out Rolling Jubilee, which was created by an offshoot of the Occupy movement. They're buying up debt at pennies on the dollar. This is debt that would be normally bought by debt collectors looking to turn a profit, and they're forgiving it. Just canceling the debt, and then it's gone. Like, forever. You can learn more at rollingjubilee.org. But Leviticus isn't all sharing and kindness and justice. In that same chapter of Leviticus that outlines a plan for Jubilee, we also find this. Your male and female slaves are to come from the nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. And Leviticus 29 says, Anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. Because they have cursed their father or mother, their blood will be on their own head. And there's also a whole host of things you can and cannot eat, including shellfish. Check this out. But all in the seas or in the rivers that do not have fins and scales, all that move in the water or anything living which is in the water, they are an abomination to you. Leviticus 11.10. Which brings us back to Leviticus 18.22 and abominations. The word abomination in Leviticus 11.10 that defines most seafood as off-limits is the same Hebrew word as that in Leviticus 18. Yep. So there's some really cool parts of Leviticus, like immigrants should be treated as citizens and we should radically share our wealth. But there's also some crappy parts like condoning slavery and making sass a capital crime. And of course, there are some eccentric parts like that whole bit about shrimp being an abomination. So perhaps it's not very helpful to look to a book written millennia ago for an exact listing of what is and is not allowed. Life and faith is more complicated than that. It's complex and most importantly, it's embodied and interpersonal. The challenge then is to wrestle together with the big questions of life. And I sure hope we're up for it.